you're in your 40s and you're not quite at the fitness level that you want to be. And if you don't have those muscles or that level of fitness by now, now is the time to pack it on. If you're that person, stick around because I'm exposing how to build muscle in your 40s and beyond. You're listening to the Modern Kings Podcast, your source of life-changing information for upgrading your lifestyle and unlocking your keys to success. Welcome to Modern Kings. What's going on, everyone? I am your host, King Prime. I can be found at IamKingPrime.com. And in today's episode, I'm providing strategies that you can use to be fit, healthy, and strong well into your prime years. I'm going to be mentioning a few things along the way as far as programs and maybe a few supplements. So drop down into the description box and you'll have a link to all of those things that I mentioned. Okay, we're going to start by getting a few lies out of the way. These are things that you commonly hear about being in your 40s. Once you hit 40, you're done. Your best days are behind you. Oh, you have to slow down as you get older. I can't lift too heavy. You always hear this prerequisite talking about consult with your doctor first. Look, the doctor wants you to be healthy. You don't need to consult to see, is it okay to be healthy? And you may have this, I have, fill in the blank, condition, so I can't work out. And lastly, some of you think high school was your prime. You didn't even have man muscles at that time. There's a difference in high school muscle and manhood muscle. Here's what makes this journey so important and so exciting when you're in your 40s and when you're in your 40s and on this fitness journey. There are many aspects of your life that are starting to um, get to that peak where you can have maximum earning potential. You can have maximum travel experiences and maximum fun, enjoyment and experiences throughout your life. You want the energy, you want the fitness level, and you want to be strong and healthy while you enjoy all of these beautiful experiences. And if you don't have those muscles or that level of fitness by now, now is the time to pack it on. And you may have been out of practice for a little while. You may be a little uncomfortable, maybe even intimidated by stepping back into the gym and getting started up again. But don't let that stop you. Just because there are people in there younger than you, uh, that look better than you, there's no excuse for you to not be in there. Uh, Let that be your driving force. Let that be your motivation. Your body is a machine. It requires maintenance. And that's why we're going to lift heavy, we're going to lift hard, and we're going to lift frequently. Resistance training is the name of the game. And at this particular stage of life, at 40 and above, resistance training is a must. Because at that age, (laughs) your body is starting to actually deteriorate. Like If you don't exercise most things on your body at this age, you will begin to lose it. Incorporating strength training into your routine not only helps build muscle, it also helps to strengthen your bones, improve your balance, and increase your metabolism. Do you ever notice when people get older and they start talking about hip problems or they fall and they break a bone when they fall? A lot of this has to do with not having muscle mass and not having the strength conditioning. Also, don't underestimate the power of consistency. Building muscle takes time. It takes dedication. Anyone that you look at with a decent structure or physique, it took them some time. It took them some dedication and loyalty to sticking to that routine. So that's what I want for you. I want you to stick with the routine and I want you to be patient with yourself and celebrate your progress along the way. You need to make sure that you enjoy the journey and know that every small step counts. Now, you may be out of practice so long that you are asking yourself, what exercises should I even be doing at this age? I can't jump like I used to. I didn't have the flexibility like I used to. So what can I do? To that point, that depends on your physical condition. Now, as much as I believe in mind over matter and getting in there and just crushing it, I do believe and I am aware that there are some physical limitations to some people that could greatly hinder you. But what I don't want you to do is use that as an excuse. Because you have a bad knee or bad knees altogether, your entire body isn't broken. So don't use that one excuse to not do anything at all. You can do something. And for that particular reason, I would say hire a trainer. The trainers are not created equally, but a trainer is a good place for you to get that momentum going. You don't have to stick with the trainer forever, 
But if you're a person that needs some direction and you need some hand holding and some in-person demonstration, a trainer is the way to go. Now, if you're totally fine and you don't have anything that's hindering you from working out, you're just lazy, here are some exercises that you can do. And as a matter of fact, these exercises are what I call functional exercises. We're not getting in the gym doing all these crazy things like muscle ups and things in that category. So we're gonna do squats, we're gonna do deadlifts, we're gonna do step ups, we're gonna do lunges, we're gonna do push ups, we're gonna do bench press, but we're gonna use dumbbells because they give you a better range of motion and you recruit different muscles when you use dumbbells versus when you use a barbell. And also with your bench press, there are variations that you can do. You can do close grip, you can do wide grip, you can do flies, you can do incline, flat, decline. All of those variations you can do with dumbbells. You can do push-ups, you can do pull-ups, and definitely work some cardio into your workout. That can be jump roping, that can be a brisk walk, that can be running, that can be a treadmill. One thing you need to be certain not to do is to take super long breaks. Stop resting so long. The point of the workout is to have time under tension and to get the heart rate up and to keep the heart rate up. I know it's not comfortable, but that's the point of the workout. And listen up, man, stop it with the curls, okay? If you really want to impress someone, do some pull-ups, pull your own body weight. Doing curls is strictly an ego exercise. So if I'm looking at these curls and the goal is to have functional mobility, functional exercises, the motion of a curl, what do you do in real life that imitates the motion of a curl? Nothing. Drop a comment if you can think of one. Please do let me know. Everything that you do daily is about pushing, pulling, sitting, standing up, and sometimes potentially running. Be mindful of this key element, and that is nutrition. Nutrition is key as you age. You cannot eat the same thing that you used to eat as a young adult. When we get older, our bodies require more of the good stuff. Now, one of the key elements to you gaining weight after 40 is a lot of freaking protein. The protein is used to promote muscle growth and muscle repair. And it's the biggest way that you can maximize your gains from all of your hard work. If you're not taking in the protein and doing the hard work, you're, you're kind of wasting the effort. You also should be mindful of what's in what you're eating. Start turning those packets around, those labels around and reading them. A lot of them have things such as high fructose corn syrup, partially hydrogenated oil. Uh, the list goes on and on and on with the bad stuff. And a good rule of thumb, outside of the highly known ingredients, if you can't pronounce it, you probably shouldn't be eating it. It's, it's probably some type of toxin or poison that's gonna cause cancer and kill you early. Here's another element that you should cut back on. I refer to them as the three white devils, as salt, sugar, and flour. Now, it's not saying don't have any. The goal is to significantly cut back on those because those are fat gainers. They're not muscle gainers. You may be thinking to yourself, gosh, well, how much protein do I need? I'm glad you asked. You should be taking in about 1 to 1.2 grams per pound of your body weight. So me, a roughly 200 pound man, I should be eating about um, 175 to 190, maybe 195 grams of protein. Now this is lean uh, body mass, right? Because I, I do have a little bit of fat. If I'm following that formula, I should have 200 grams of protein per day in order to continue gaining muscle mass. Now you can track how much protein you're gaining by using a nutrition app, one of my all-time favorites um, that I used to use is MyFitnessPal. Um, I'll drop a link to it, but there are a lot of good choices out there. Um, you just simply put your food in, it logs it, keeps track of the proteins, the calories, and um, everything that you need to hit those milestones that you're looking for. If you're still here and you're in your 40s and you are looking to gain muscle, drop a comment below. I would love to know what your goals are. Next area we're covering is mobility. And in short, mobility counteracts the effects of aging. It's gonna give you that range of motion, that muscle flexibility, and the ability to move more freely and comfortably as you age. You ever hear like the old man grunt? 
people like sit down. I actually occasionally have, I don't know why, but some reason as I begin to sit down, get up, get in the car, I do it comfortably, but I'm starting to make these noises. Help me out somebody. I don't know why. But what happens as you get older is you find it more challenging to do the little things. And this is what makes mobility so important. You're going to need it to prevent injury because limited mobility increases the risk of something happening to you. You can't bend like you used to. You can't reach like you used to. You don't have the balance like you used to. Mobility exercises help to increase all of these elements. There is no reason that you shouldn't be able to do the same things that you were doing 10 years ago or 15 years ago. As you age and you keep your mobility on point, you can still have the coordination, the stability, the balance, and the flexibility that you had as a young adult. The mobility exercises are also going to help alleviate pain, improve your posture. Oh, that's a big one for me. When I see people in that humped over, hunchback of Notre Dame position, and they're walking on a cane and they're moving like at one miles per hour, I'm like, nah, as soon as I see them, I'm like, nah, I gotta, I'm doing mobility as soon as I get home. And if you're like me and love an active lifestyle, I mean, it's, it's just a no brainer that you've gotta be on that mobility train. Because what it's doing is boosting your overall well being, adding a quality of life that you want to sustain for as long as you can. Now, after all is said and done with this work, you want and need recovery. And you may have to take a little longer to recover nowadays than you used to take. As we age, our bodies require more recovery than it did when we were younger. So prioritize rest. I mean, if you're a night owl, look, whatever it is, make sure you get your eight, nine, 10, seven, whatever hours it is, make sure you get proper rest, make sure that you're hydrated, and make sure that you're getting proper nutrition. Those three things are key elements to muscle growth and recovery. And the last thing in this area is you may have to supplement. I actually recommend that you supplement with uh, items such as uh, branched chain amino acids, uh, known as BCAAs. BCAAs will actually help the muscles to recover better, quicker, and you also want to supplement with vitamins and the things that you eat on a daily basis. There's no way that you're getting everything that you need. And that is why you supplement and take vitamins. I'll likely have a video ahead on that. Here are my takeaways for you. At age 40 and over, like in that 40s decade, these are some of the best and most exciting years of your life. It is a foundation to build upon and you deserve to be strong, fit and energetic while enjoying it. Go tell everybody that you're getting in shape. Social media is a great place for that. Hey, send me a message, whether it's on YouTube, Spotify, wherever, but let somebody know that you're serious and you're about to work out. And what that's gonna do is bring about accountability. Now, you've gotta back up what you said. And I want you to take your time and embrace this, right? What that means is don't go in the gym trying to outdo some 20 year old because he's in there killing it. Don't let your ego put you in a worse place than you already are. <laughs> this is not a competition. Okay. You've also heard me say this before. You can't manage what you can't measure. So start writing this down, whether it's a pen and paper, whether it's an app, whether it's a spreadsheet, but track where you are now and, and make sure that you note the small wins and just track it and share your updates. Listen, write down where you currently are, pay attention and make the small wins and just be consistent over time. Check in a month later, two months later, three months later and watch your progress go into the direction that you desire. Let's get it, man. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate if you pass this along to someone that thinks that they're over the hill because they're 40 or above and actually life is just getting freaking started and they need to stop making excuses. Let me leave you with a quote, and you probably heard it many times. Some people want it to happen, some wish it would happen, and some people make things happen. Follow me on YouTube at King Prime. That is the at symbol, King Prime. Follow me on Instagram at I am dot King Prime. Until next video, look your best, do your best, and be your best.